Welcome to this lecture on the scope of greenhouse gas or GHG emissions. In this lecture we will cover what are the activities and resources that are included in estimating an organization's total emissions. In many countries it is compulsory to report the greenhouse gas emissions on an yearly basis. To make the results more reliable and consistent, a framework has been developed by the World Resource Institute called the GHG Protocol. The GHG protocol breaks down the scope of emissions into three parts. These are namely scope 1, scope 2 and scope 3 emissions. Scope 1 are the direct emissions while scope 2 and 3 are the indirect emissions. In scope 1 we account for the emissions that result because of direct burning of fossil fuel on site. They also include any refrigerant leak on site. Similarly Emissions resulting from the use of organizations' vehicles are also included in Scope 1. Lastly, any emissions due to the process on site, for instance ammonia release or other gas release, are also accounted for in Scope 1. Just to sum up, the thing to remember about Scope 1 is that it accounts for all on-site emissions and also includes emissions by vehicles based on that site. Scope 2 is the indirect energy emission because of energy usage, mainly electricity usage. An organization may use electricity which doesn't generate emissions on site. However, the creation of electricity and its distribution results in emissions that are off site, that is, in a power plant. It should be noted that electricity emissions vary greatly because of the fuel used to produce electricity. For example, coal produces the most emissions because it's not a clean fuel. Electricity can also be generated from heavy furnace, oil or gas which are relatively cleaner. The cleanest source of electricity is renewables. Scope 3 emissions are all other indirect emissions. Scope 3 emissions are often the largest category and can account up to 80% of an organization's emissions. However, they are often overlooked and underreported. They are all other emissions that are a result of organization's activity other than on-site fuel use, on-site emissions, and electricity usage. So things like emissions for purchased goods and services, capital goods, waste generation, employee commuting, and business travel are just a few of the 15 categories that are included in Scope 3. For the sake of simplification, we divide scope 3 emissions into two categories, namely upstream and downstream emissions. Suppose your organization produces a product and let's say that product is a table. All the emissions that result in acquisition of wood and other materials, nail, paint, varnish, etc. and its transportation to the site are upstream scope 3 emissions. The table is made which results in a lot of wood chip and sawdust waste. This wastage will also be accounted for in the upstream emissions unless recycled. Then the table is shipped to all the distribution centers. The emissions that result because of the distribution of the table and its disposal once it's thrown away are downstream emissions. So a big question at this point would be what are the emissions that are not included in scope 1, 2, and 3? Well, suppose you run a supermarket. The customers that come to your supermarket use cars and purchase items. The customer's CO2 emissions because of their traveling are not included in any scope. It is something that is beyond the control of the organization. What scope 1, 2, and 3 allow us to do is to identify the emissions which have our highest influence, namely all emissions under the scope 1 and 2. This categorization also allows us to identify emission hotspots. Many of these hotspots may lie in scope 3 by the way. Once the hotspots are identified then the organization can focus on reducing them to improve business efficiency. It is very common to have the 80-20 rule even in the case of GHG emissions that is 20% of the organization's activity may result in 80% of its emissions. Experts have suggested that it is often the purchased goods and services in the scope 3 category that account for the highest emissions. 
If the GHG protocol is understood properly, then one can easily estimate the CO2 emission of an organization. There are, however, carbon accounting firms and carbon accounting softwares available to help you in this regard.